Luis Ortega, thank you for your time today. How would you pitch to someone your film El Angel? To someone on the street? Well, I'm a very bad pitcher. You're a bad pitcher? Is, yeah. that, is that your thing? It's not my thing, yeah. Okay. But I'd say it's the story of, uh, of how innocence could be very dangerous mm. and how freedom can take you to jail. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a, good, that's a good line. I like that. So, um, what I really liked was, uh, or I lost a lot of things about this movie, but I really liked the, the rock music. Yeah. I think it just adds that adrenaline. It gets, like, <coughs> very visceral, very exciting. Yeah. And I, I wanted to know, how did you uh, select some of the music? How did you, uh, tell me about that decision-making process. Well, the movie occurs in 1971, 72, mm -hmm. so we had that limit of time. We weren't going to use anything beyond right. that point, mm -hmm. um, beyond that period. So, that kind of, oriented already what the music was going to be like um so i i um i went uh researched all the rock music from argentina i really wanted to keep it argentinian yeah. like um except moondog which is a uh this drifter blind drifter that lived in new york and he did this amazing music i don't even know how he got in the studio because he was poor blind and lived in the street and uh, if you look him up he's amazing moondog he made like six records they're mostly instrumental and um so he's the only four asian um moon dog yeah moon dog all right so this movie is based on a true story yeah do you ever did you ever like wonder like am i dropping the ball on this were you worried about like what people who were affected by this story might have thought about the movie well did, do, you, do you ever fact that factor that in or it's kind of like i'm just making my movie no i was more I could do. well i was more worried about what i was gonna think about the movie yeah so i was writing and i was like why the hell am i writing the story I, I'm not into killing people <laughs> and, and and um like but then the the just um it's it's such an attractive story because this kid that looks so beautiful and innocent and naive and 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 like um there was this criminologist that drew a profile in the 50s 60s he was called Lombroso mm -hmm. I think he was Italian and he said Basically, people believe this till this day that um, natural born criminals were um, ugly, had big noses, were dark skin, <laughs> big ears, and it's so stupid, but yeah. it still works that way. Right. People won't fear someone beautiful in the mm. street at three in the morning, but they'll <laughs> fear someone that they don't think mm. applies to beauty or their, their idea of beauty. Mm. So, in Argentina, I wasn't born because this was the seventies, but um, all the normal people were freaking out because they were like, "Shit!" So criminals aren't only poor and right. and 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 dark. How can I spot them? You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, but then the true story is. I mean, I'm very inspired by this film called Badlands by Terrence Malick. Yes, excellent film. Martin Sheen, Sissy Spacek. Yeah, Martin Sheen exactly in Sissy Spacek, one of my favorite films, and also Bonnie and Clyde and Ooh. Dillinger. And Rumblefish. The yeah. Dillinger with uh, Warren Oates? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, not that, yeah. I watched like two minutes of the Johnny Depp film. <laughs> Couldn't stand it. Public Enemies? Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. And, um, <laughs> and uh, Pigzode from Barenko, and um, especially th these films with juvenile delinquents, where I was really drawn to those films when I was a kid, like Drug oh, yeah. Drugstore Cowboy. I was, fuck, I want to be a heroin addict. <laughs> And I was only 10 years old. It's a power of movies. Yeah, I mean, uh, Matt Dillon uh, looks so cool, Mickey Rourke. Mm -hmm. and, um, but I also, I, I really didn't want to make a violent film. I wanted to make a film that made you want to live and dance. And mm. like, like, but I noticed that the, this, this was such an attractive story that I was going to use it to try to put something good out there, not do a story about evil. Like, yeah. I'm not interested in evil. There's enough of it. Not on its own sake. You're attracted to like a good story and interesting characters and yeah. thematics. Just life yeah. is beyond good and bad. It's it's just mm. if if you sit down and and observe it, it's, it's just wild and you, you uncomprehensible. And I think if it has an explanation, then it's not worth a film. It's only right. worth a film if if you don't know if you're really attracted to it. And you don't know what the fuck is about, and <laughs> you want to discover it in the process. 
um, Samuel Beckett, you know the writer? Of he course. Did, yeah. Um, he, he was crossing this, this, um, this park at like 2 in the morning, I think it was in France, and he got stabbed in the back. Whoa, I didn't know this story. And, okay. and then the cops got the guy and, and, and told him, look, you want to press charge? And he's like, no, I just want to ask him why the hell he stabbed me in the back. Hmm. And he asked the guy and he said, I don't know. And from that moment on, he started writing his most important um, body of work, like Waiting for Godot and all these yeah. plays that basically go around um, something that has no explanation. Mm, the absurdity element. I mean, someone almost killed you and you asked him why and he's like, I don't know. Right. That freaks you out. It's even worse than if they go, no, I wanted to steal your money. Okay, I can understand. the hell of it. Yeah, I, yeah. I can understand that. But you don't know mm. why you shot me or why you stabbed me. <laughs> that deserves a movie. That's very interesting. And one thing, I'll, I'll, not to get too in, into your head, but uh, you, your first film came out when you were 22, correct? Yeah. And this, this your, your, your protagonist in this film, it, it was what, quite accomplished at, at a young age. Did you feel any connection with him on that level alone? Well, to say the truth, it's much more my youth than the youth of the real character. I mean, oh wow! When I was young, I lived in Miami, mm -hmm. and um, um, my bre my I met this Colombian guy, and he was my best friend, and he lived with his mom. They had left his father; he was an, a narc. And his mom was really wild, and she would take us to break into houses and 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 steal in shopping malls, and we would break into like um, army stores and steal like um, these big army smoke bombs, and she would buy us just weapons and pornography, and it was a real okay. wild wild experience. She had a real sexual approach to us. Really? We were only ten, eleven years old, and um, and uh, so that's how. I in, I drew this character or the main character just um, kind of remembering all these adventures as a kid. I mean, I never killed anyone, but we did all these like breaking into houses with his his mom, and his mom was really sexual, and so that's why this other family is there and that character. Yeah, yeah his yeah. friend's mom kind of approaching him. And Man, it goes deeper than I thought. I was just making a very superficial connection. <laughs> no, no, yeah, but, uh, it's, that, yeah. It's my my. It's what I remember of my youth and this feeling of that death is not real. Like life is so, cheap, kind of. No, death is not real. Someone invented oh. it, and they're. Tr I mean, they're trying to trick us that we're gonna die, and and basically this character Carlito sees everything as fake. Mm. So he thinks everybody's mocking him. God is fucking having a laugh, mm -hmm. and so he's paranoid. And he also feels he's in a film, so he walks like in this stylized way, and acts cool just in case they're filming him. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I really enjoyed the film. And is there anything else you guys coming <coughs> up with the horizon you could tell us about besides uh, getting this movie out there? Sorry. Is there like any other projects you're working on at the moment that you can uh, give us a little hint about coming up next, or is that too early to talk about? I want to go back to the streets, and um, I, I want to do a film. Um, there's this really bad film called Ironweed. Or, Ironweed? I think so, uh, with Jack Nicholson and Meryl Streep, and they play two street bums. Okay, I would heard of this one. And it's really bad, but <laughs> it, it would have been really good if it would have been well done. Um, and um, I just want to go a back. A remake for a bad movie? There should be more of those. Yeah, I think, why would you make a remake of a good movie? I mean, right. it's, it's done. But no, I, I wouldn't make a remake, but um, I want to I wanna hit the streets and make, like, a really powerful movie about people in the streets. But I've been doing it with non-actors since I was 19 with my first film. Right. And in this film, too. But um, now I want to work with actors, and um, I'm writing a lot, but I'm at that stage where you don't know what the hell you're doing. You're just writing it mm. down and trying to figure it out. For sure. Yeah, it's a confusing mm -hmm. moment right now. Okay, you're well, just I'll, putting it all down. I, 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 I want to stay tuned because El Angel, you guys got to check this one out. All right, thank thanks you so a much lot, man.